Bill Bryson is England's favorite adopted son. He is primarily known as a travel writer, but has also written on the English language, on scientific subjects, on his own childhood, and most recently on Shakespeare. Much of his writing is suffused by comedy of a type that can make his readers laugh aloud. This comedy is always free of malice, but often has a lingering poignancy. Near the beginning of The Lost Continent, for example, Mr. Bryson describes driving along an American highway and through a six-house town with a name like Spigot or Urinal. A man sitting on a box in his front yard watches Mr. Bryson's car approach, watches it drive past, and watches it disappear into the distance. The narrator comments, I wouldn't be surprised if even now he thinks of me from time to time. <laughs> The line is, is funny, but the poignancy arises from the gentle hint of a life without events spent sitting on a box in one's front yard. Now, The Lost Continent was not Bill Bryson's first travel book. That was called The Palace Under the Alps, but it was the book that made his name. It was followed by a series of travel books that many of you will have read, Neither Here Nor There, about traveling in Europe, Notes from a Small Island about traveling in the United Kingdom with its memorable description of the English landlady. Notes from a big country about returning to the US. A Walk in the Woods about walking the Appalachian Trail and Down Under about traveling in Australia. They are all propelled by laughter and the narrator's voice, like the man, is benign and self-deprecating. The fact that the laughter lacks malice makes it wonderfully restorative. Bill Bryson has recently written a book on Shakespeare whose Love's Labour's Lost ends with a character being asked to use laughter to cheer the sick and dying. At first he hesitates, saying to move wild laughter in the throat of death, it cannot be, it is impossible. Mirth cannot move a soul in agony. He then realizes the error of his judgment. Comedy like Bill Bryson's can indeed move wild laughter in the throat of death. His book on a journey to Kenya called Bill Bryson's African Diary has his usual comic wryness, but also deals with the work of Care International among the poor and dispossessed of Africa. He has donated the royalties for this book to Care International. Beyond these travel books, there is a volume of childhood autobiography, The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid, several books on the English language, and even a book on science called A Short History of Nearly Everything. One of our senior scientists commented that he had never before read a book of popular science in which the science reflected current academic and scientific thinking. Mr. Bryson was able to achieve this by extensive reading and by visiting and speaking to the foremost authorities in many fields. The impact of the book was felt in educational and political circles and in due course, Tony Blair invited Mr. Bryson to Downing Street for a discussion of science and education. Bill Bryson cares deeply about the English countryside. And last year, when he became president of the campaign to protect rural England, he launched a national campaign to address the practices of littering and fly tipping. He has also found a way of contributing to higher education by accepting the chancellorship of Durham University, where he succeeded Peter Ustinov. That succession is appropriate on many levels, but chiefly because the combination of narrative and comedic gifts embodied in Sir Peter Ustinov now live on in Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson is by origin an American. He was famously born in Des Moines because somebody had to be. He has, however, spent most of his adult life in England, which has in turn taken him to heart. The revealing American title of the book published here as Notes from a Big Country is I'm a Stranger Here Myself. A writer needs the detachment of the observer and cannot quite belong to any country about which he writes. Bill Bryson loves this country, but still writes about it with smiling detachment. One of the greatest tributes to the effect of his characterizations of this country and its people is that England turns to him to articulate its identity. 
In 2003, as part of World Books Day, the BBC ran a poll asking people which book best encapsulated what it means to be British. The winner was Notes from a Small Island. In the same year, he was appointed a commissioner for English heritage and so came to represent the England that he has adopted. The poet and playwright Ben Jonson memorably wrote that his finest creations were not his poems and plays, but his children. So it is for Bill Bryson, who has four, one of whom is about to graduate in medicine. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and of the Council, I present to you William Maguire Bryson, that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Letters. Well, I'm looking for the degree of Doctor of Letters. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Professor Campbell, for um, those kind words. I'll be blushing off the rest of the week. Um, this is a huge and great honor for me, uh, and made it all the more gratifying by knowing that, that I had to do nothing at all to get it, uh, whereas uh, David, my son, has just worked very hard for five long years in order to earn his degree today. Um, but thank you from us both, most sincerely, and, and my congratulations to him and all the rest of those of you graduating today who really did have to work long and hard and productively to get to this position of happy eminence in which you find yourselves at last this morning. Since you um, were kind enough to invite me here today and to bestow this great honor upon me and have made me feel extremely welcome and important throughout my whole visit here, I wonder if I might try to repay some of this kindness in some small measure by offering you just some small very brief pieces of wisdom, if it's not too impertinent to do so. These, these are things that I've learned in half a century of blundering through the world, and that I hope might be of passing use to you graduates uh, in the years ahead. So in no particular order, here they are. These are my seven tips for a successful life. One, be happy, really happy, more or less all the time. You really ought to be. You have a million things to be happy about. You're bright and young, and you have your whole lives in front of you. You have been impeccably educated. You live in a rich country. George Bush will never be your president. <laughs> so count your blessings and be glad of them. Two, and if you can't be happy, at least don't whinge. It's awful and it doesn't become you. Indeed, it doesn't get you anywhere. No one will ever thank you or admire you more deeply or say, oh, let's invite Simon and Emma to the party. They're fantastic whingers. <laughs> so stop moaning. It's a waste of oxygen. Three, when you're walking down the street and you see someone drop litter, kill them. <laughs> Four, but otherwise be good. Uh, in fact, be more than good, be compassionate, be kind, and particularly be kind to people who are worse off than you, which you will find is most people. And say thank you a lot to everyone who deserves it. Five, never sneak up on people from behind and startle them in the belief that it's amusing. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Six, always buy my books in hardback as soon as they come out. <laughs> Seven, and if you remember nothing else from today, please remember this. When called upon to speak in public, always keep your remarks very brief. Thank you very, very much. Have wonderful days. Thank you.